Hey everybody, the best part about adulting is you can make Christmas come whenever you want. In this case, it came early. New toy, let's check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Garage Gear, I'm JB. All right, so we have gotten a couple inches of snow now. Question becomes, do you shovel or do you use a snowblower? Well, shoveling, in my mind, if it's two inches or less, I'm probably gonna shovel, all right? Maybe I don't wanna smell like gas that day from the snowblower. I'll show them. If it's more than two inches, then I'm gonna bust out the snowblower and attack the driveway that way. There are some times, for example, in the morning you wake up, you're kind of running behind, you're buried deep in the snow in the driveway, and you have to snow plow. Then you smell like gas, you got a shower, kind of a pain. One more step in your morning that you just can't squeeze in. Shoveling would take too long. Well, I have found a solution to that. Here's a new toy that I kind of like. This is a snowcaster. This is a shovel that you push and supposedly it decreases your shoveling time by about 50%. So it's a two-wheeled shovel that you push. Pretty simple. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's crack this box open. We're gonna do an unboxing here. We're gonna open this thing up, build it, put it together, and put it to use. All right, stay tuned. So ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look and see what exactly you get in the box. Don't worry, I'll follow the instructions. We have what looks to be a crooked bracket, but this is actually how it's meant to be. And we have one bracket. We have the snow blade itself. We have the handlebars, which just don't quite Come out. Oh, we got some wheels too. All right, so handlebar. There are some instructions in here. There we go. Okay. So, not a whole lot of hardware to this. Uh, not too, too complicated. So I was looking over the instructions. We're gonna need a 9 16 wrench. Then we're gonna need a half inch wrench. Not too, too complicated. So we're gonna get our wrenches out. Let's take a look. We have a half inch and a 9 16. I'm gonna tear open this package, get the bolts out. If there's anybody out there like me, I like to do one bolt at a time. I don't like to crack open the whole package because then they're kind of spilling everywhere. So I'm going to take out the bolts first that I need, and then, whoop, and then we will take out the nuts that I need to for this as well. So there you go. There we go. They really sealed these babies on there. I got to use a knife to get them out. So our first step is connecting our frame to the blade. So that's going to be our first step. So instructions are pretty simple. We're going to feed our bolt through. It has a square kind of head to it so it'll kind of stay in place. Then we're gonna put it through, and if you can see, boom, we're sticking through. We're gonna stick a nut on there, tighten it down. I'm just gonna kind of get them in place where I want them first. Make sure they all kind of fit. Right. 
Last one. Put it in. There we go. You know, I've seen other videos on this thing and I like it. I, I really do. And that's why I was kind of inspired to buy it. This thing cost about, I think, $90 after tax. And I said, you know what? If it's going to save me time and it's not going to hurt my back to lift and lift and lift and lift all this heavy snow, that might be worthwhile. So, you know, I see it as kind of a good investment. So I'm going to tighten these down now with my half inch wrench, make sure they're snug. This is a pretty durable plastic. In fact, it's even got like a reinforced end here, which is kind of cool. It's even thicker on the sides. So that's kind of neat. You know, it seems to be pretty well constructed. And hey, if it's going to save me time and save me pain, I'm all in. I'm to that point, I don't like to ache anymore. I like to make my machine work better for me, make it more efficient. If I'm going to do shoveling, I'm going to make that more efficient. It's just going to cut down on the time and the aches and pains I got to deal with. Last winter, I was actually going through some hip issues and I was in a lot of pain for about a month and a half. And when it was snowing, I dreaded it because it, it killed to lift the snow and put the pressure on my hip. And this, I'm betting, will make things a lot easier because it's just a direct push. So we're just tightening these down. Now what's kind of interesting about this is the bolts are kind of shielded by this bracket right here. And if I had my guess as to why they did that is maybe so when you're pushing you don't hit your boots against these bolts and then you're tearing up your boots. Or uh, maybe it's just to help reinforce it. It could be one of those things. I don't know, I'm not the engineer behind this, but I'm guessing that those are the reasons. So this is 36 inches wide. That's about maybe a foot wider than my widest shovel. So this is going to push quite a bit of snow. So, here we go. I'm going to set that down. Go back to my instruction manual. Alright, so next step says we're going to the handlebar. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to take out, I believe they're pronounced clevis pins. We're going to take these out. If you were to buy these individually, ladies and gentlemen, these are actually really expensive. I had to buy these at one point. And we're talking like four or five dollars at Home Depot for these little clevis pins. All right, they got the little hole at the bottom. These can get pretty pricey if they're shaped a certain way. So we need those. Then we need four washers. All right, and that looks to be these smaller washers on the side. Crack these out. Now this whole shovel is meant to be used on light amounts of snow. This is not for lifting at all or whatsoever. So this is just to be a quick, you got a dusting worth of snow, you have maybe two, three inches, that's it. Like you're not supposed to be pushing much more than that. In fact, it's just gonna take you longer. So. At that point, you step up to the snowblower and you go. This is just meant to get a quick dusting or a couple inches, that's all. And then, I need these pins out too. Cut these out. I'm actually excited to get this thing out there. I wanna give this thing a shot. Longest part's just getting everything out of this package. All right. There we go. So the instructions say, Two washers, one clevis pin, and a little O-ring. So, from here, we take our handle, and it's actually gonna be kind of crooked. And that's okay, that's what we want. So it's gonna go on the inside. It looks like I'm gonna have to first get these Place. Here we go. 
I'm gonna get one in to start. There we go. Washer on top, hardest part. In that O-ring in there, huh? Maybe not. Perfect. That wasn't too hard at all. Next one, again, two washers. Washer on top. And we're gonna feed our O-ring through. I don't know if you want to call this a snap ring or a key ring or something along those lines. But now you kind of see she swings. So we have our clevis pin, washer, washer, ring. Clevis pin, washer, washer, ring. There we go. This is actually very light. I might even say that this is lighter than my actual shovel, which I have just off to the side here, which I would say this is actually lighter. Pretty cool. Now all we gotta put on is the wheels. Themselves. There's only a couple bolts left. So we have bolt, bolt, four washers, two nuts, two lock nuts. Easy. Easy. Voila. There is everything. So, pretty simple instructions. Bolt through. Then, sticks out, we got a washer, stick it through, and another washer and the bolt. But before I do this, I'm gonna add a step. I'm gonna throw a little grease in there. We're gonna get a little grease in there to kinda, kinda help lubricate it. Maybe, maybe not totally necessary, but Steel bolts could rust and corrode. We're gonna help ourselves out down the road. Let's see. There we go. Now I've used this stuff before in past snowblower videos. It's Marine Grease by Lucas Oil. Okay, this is not a paid sponsorship, but I do like this Marine Grease. This stuff is not afraid of water, all right? It holds up quite a long time. And since that's what we're talking about is water here and snow, I'm just gonna take about a little finger dabs worth and I'm gonna just wrap it all around this bolt here. I even do the threads. And we're just gonna get it all over the place. I got paper towels to kind of clean it up, but we're just gonna get it all over that bolt. You can kind of see it's blue in color. They actually use this stuff for boats and the gearing on boats when you're kind of cranking it in, getting it on the trailer. Kind of cool. All right, so from there, and she goes, that's that. All right, so there's number one. Then, number two. 
and I'm not using a whole, whole lot. I'm just using a little just to kind of coat it. That's all. Just getting it on the threads. Yeah, it's a little messy, so what? Again, bolt two. Hey, if it slides even better than what it was supposed to, it's a win. It's a win-win right there. All right, so, boom, that's done. I'm gonna leave the gloves on just because I gotta get these nuts on here. And uh, there might be some remnant grease I gotta deal with. Cap that up, that's done. So now we go washer through. Actually, that does kind of help it glide a little bit. Kind of happy with that idea. Washer and lock nut. I'm going to tighten that down in a minute. So, same thing on the other side. We're going to go washer to start. Again, that does kind of help it a little bit. That's actually not a bad idea, guys. Take my advice on that one. And then from here, boom. So these will have to be ratcheted down. So I don't know if they say to get a ratchet, but we're going to use one anyways. So that's that. I'm going to lose the gloves. Don't even really need the instructions anymore. We're going to tighten this down. So this is where they said the 916 ths I guess that's for the lock nuts that you can tighten here, but how do you hold the other end? Well, what I'm gonna do is just slap some ratchets on this bad boy and we'll be done. So, I'm gonna use my 916. I'll use my half inch, torque it down nicely. Let's see, this is probably gonna be. What are you? What are you? What are you? Can't be three quarters, that's too big. Holy smokes, it is three quarters. All right. Here we go, let's take this bad boy down. That seems pretty good to me. Yeah, that's good. All right, so now the other side, 9 sixteenths, 3 quarters. That's pretty good. Wheel spins, wheel spins. Here we go. Kind of neat. We're gonna go give this thing a whirl. I gotta try this thing out. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, gets a thumbs up. That's pretty cool. That did that very fast. My back doesn't hurt. It was easy to push. A uh, little first kind, first kind of a uh, couple minutes, I had to figure out like the flip to it. But uh, once I got going with that, pretty easy. So you kind of just figure out the direction of the blade. So pretty easy. I'm gonna go do the tail end of the driveway, and I've got about a four car, maybe five car driveway if you park one sideways at the end. And I just did that three quarters of this thing in two minutes. So that didn't take long. Maybe it's three, I don't know, but it wasn't that long. All right, if I was doing my other shovel, that would have taken a lot longer, a lot longer. So I am very impressed with this thing already. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, you can kind of see I don't got a whole lot of snow on the driveway to work with, but, but I can kind of give you a quick little demonstration of how this thing works. The cool thing about this shovel, is it's always at an angle. So it's always gonna push snow off to the side 
left or right. You're not just gonna build up this pile in front of you, it's actually gonna be dumping it either off to one side or the other. All right, so a good way to do this is kind of go down the middle, get a little path going, and then I got some snow piled up down here at the bottom, and then I'm gonna push this off to the side. And I'll go this way, and I'll push this off to the side. Now, from here, I'm gonna point my angle at the side, and from here, push my snow off. Now I want you to look carefully at something. If you see that snow does not go up and out of the way, it just kind of comes kind of falling back a little bit over back onto the driveway. So if you are one of those OCD people, you know, and you really like your driveway clear, well, this tool gets it clear, but not in a perfect way. So I like to point my angle of the blade down the driveway, kind of let stuff fall with gravity push, flip, push, flip, and we'll just keep on going, boom, now we'll talk about sidewalks here in a second, but, You kind of see, this is a, this is a nice tool. I kind of like it. You can kind of see how much snow kind of falls back onto the driveway, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it'll melt. It's not much. It's not a ton. You can easily drive over it. That's one thing I want you to know. Look, it kind of gets hung up. That's not a lot of snow and ice, but it does kind of get hung up on that. So you gotta lift it up a little bit, push the rest. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, there is the driveway, pretty much clear. If you see the edges, there's a little snow that fell onto the edges, and that's okay. I mean, if I really want to tighten it up, I could go down the sides and catch it that way, but uh, you know, I'll leave it for now. If it melts, it melts, big deal. I can easily drive over that. So now, let's talk about the sidewalks. Sidewalks can get a little complicated with this because, well, it does all right with a little bit of snow, but now it's starting to get harder to push. My feet are slipping a little bit. And then from here, I gotta do one of those and then do it again, just like that. Push it again. It does all right. I mean, if you look back at my path, pretty good it's a little tight though it's just it's a 36 inch wide blade on a 45 inch piece of sidewalk it's all right it's doing the job if you have much more snow than this though it's going to be a headache
So now let's review. First off, let's talk about the construction. I like how this thing is built. This thing can be tossed around, flipped around, slammed, and you know what? It's all plastic down at the bottom. It's not cracking. It's actually made of a pretty decent plastic. The blade is strong. You can see it's reinforced here. This is pretty thick and flexible at the same time. There's not a lot of hardware to this thing. The handle's metal. The wheels are pretty strong. Spin nicely. I'd say this is pretty well built. Let's talk about the functionality of it. Yes, it cleans quick. It has cut down my shoveling time by about half. So if it took me 10 minutes to shovel all this driveway, it's now taking me about five. And, and in the morning when I'm busy and I'm trying to get out of here, it's actually pretty quick to do. Let's talk about some downsides. First off, you can see all along here, along the edges, there's the end of my driveway. It comes out probably over a foot spilling back on. Is it the end of the world? No, my cars can drive over that. But if you're one of those OCD people that like to really clean things up, that could be an issue for you. Big cracks. The bottom of my driveway is elevated about maybe two inches, maybe an inch. So that's a big bump. This thing's gonna hit it. Could I crack it? I don't think so, but that could be an issue. Chunks of ice like this, it can get stuck on too. So it's gonna get hung up and not go. So I have to lift up on the end to do that. Same thing along the edges, sidewalks, a little tight you can see I got some snow spilling out on the sides but all in all this will pass it'll do a good job all right so there you go so ladies and gentlemen there you go that's my review on the snowcaster snow pushing shovel and I'll tell you I like this product if I had to grade it out of five stars I'd probably say four out of five. Gets a lot of points for the functionality. I think it pushes snow really nicely. I think it gets snow out of the way quickly. I think it pushes quite a bit of snow. Uh, so I think that's great. I think it gets more points for the durability of the product too. I don't think it'll crack or collapse on me. I think it's pretty strong. It can easily be flipped and slammed around. So I like that a lot. Downsides, doesn't get everything fully cleaned up the way I want it, but it does good enough for a quick job. Other downsides, sidewalks can take a little bit, a, a little bit of uh, finessing to make sure it gets it clean and right. Other than that, guys, I say a four out of five. I say it gets a good grade. Uh, I really like it. It's gonna help me push a lot of snow out of the way. I like it. So any questions you may have or comments or concerns, send them my way. Love to hear your feedback and how much snow you've actually pushed with this thing, all right? Cool. Thanks again for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Garage Gear, I'm JB, and have a nice day.